Hi everybody, uh, I'm Franziska uh, from Junge Tüftler, which is uh, translated means something like young tinkerers. And uh, yeah, um, just uh, to give you a little bit of background, so I'm a product and service designer, however now I work in education. <laughs> And uh, before I start to tell you a little bit about what uh, Junge Tüftler actually does and how we do it, um, I want to share our vision with you because our vision um, is like, <clears throat> and I think we share a lot of values with you guys, uh, to enable kids actually and teenagers. We work with uh, kids starting from the first grade up to the 10th grade um, to become confident and creative and self-determined citizens and uh, therefore actually we use a lot of tools and also technology I will show you later but um, for uh, first I actually want to share with you so why am I doing this and why are we doing this and why is it important actually to think about these things so um, as I mentioned I'm a product designer and service designer I worked uh, in corporates and agencies and I got briefings like that like constantly and they are super interesting to me to reinvent mobility and reinvent the future of work and but they are also very complex right and um, so um, it is interesting but uh, the complexity is that the right word I guess uh, is quite uh, big and we need different skills uh, to come together to actually uh, handle these kind of tasks so um, yeah, this is just a very bad picture, but also a very uh, good example for a complex project because this is a picture from the Berlin airport and it says, in June 2012, the most uh, modern airport uh, in Europe will open up. So um, I think this is just a great metaphor um, to understand how complex projects can grow while we are developing it and uh, what different skills actually needs to come together. So, um, uh, yeah. And also, this is a very uh, famous quote I like to share with you, um, which says, half of the jobs we will see in 2030 are not even invented yet. So um, that means that in the future, uh, the next generation, or also we actually, need to prepare for a world where we have to deal with a lot of uncertainty and with a lot of things we cannot even imagine today. And this is quite uh, exciting. But also, um, how do we prepare uh, kids um, uh, for that future? And how do we um, uh, help them gain skills um, to deal with these kind of things? And um, looking um, at schools from a, de a designer's perspective actually is quite sad, I guess, because um, the school system, and I speak now for Germany because I grew up in Germany, and so my experience was only German schools, but. I can imagine that it is quite similar in other European or worldwide countries, um, is that it was, um, school is a system which was developed a long time ago by people who uh, wanted to create uh, people um, who are very um, following uh, the establishment and um, good citizens in a way that we trust the system and that we are um, trustworthy in a way to fulfill our duty as a citizen. Um, yeah, that has changed and also um, the interaction in school has changed and what is most crucial I think to that point what has changed is that back then one person in this room was, uh, was the gatekeeper to knowledge and this was the teacher and that has totally changed, right? With the internet I mean everybody can access everything wherever and learn everything wherever. So I um, yeah, what we experience in working with um, kids and teachers, there's quite a lot of uh, anxiety uh, from the teachers that they lose their face because they are not um, um, the source of knowledge anymore. And um, I think that is something which really needs to change in order to um, empower the teacher that they don't need to know everything, right? They are just more the, the guide for the students in or, uh, on their learning path. And um, another very sad story to share is, um, that, um, is this quote that uh, children between three and five uh, actually reach a standard of genius uh, um, in uh, standardized tests. So 98% uh, of these kids actually reach this uh, genius standard. However, if you do this 
an equivalent test with 25 plus year old, only 2% get the um, level of genius anymore. So something goes quite wrong between three, uh, oh, 5 and 25. And um, yeah, what really um, um, shapes us in this time is of course school, right? And um, yeah, in case you panic now and you think our uh, future generations uh, will be totally overwhelmed, yeah, you might be right. <laughs> However, there are quite um, nice um, or quite promising things out there and the frameworks and projects which uh, go in the right direction. And uh, one is um, this, uh, not very beautiful, but still um, quite um, promising uh, framework. These are the so-called 21st century skills. I don't know if you heard of them, but um, lots of schools and uh, governments are now uh, referring to that. And um, it's not anymore about, we're not talking about knowledge, but we are talking about skills. So we try to um, help the kids actually gain skills. And these are life and career skills, learning and innovation skills, and information, media, and technology skills. And if we look at this closer, um, I don't know if you can read it or even one more closer. Lots of these um, uh, skills are quite uh, familiar to uh, design people. Um, so for example, um, creativity, communication, project-based learning, productivity and prototyping, flexibility, self-initiative work. Um, this is all, these are all things which you learn in a um, design education. And, um, uh, so that's why I think design is actually important to uh, get into schools in order to help the kids um, adapt these skills. However, what is also super important is that um, these 21st century skills, of course, uh, also fo uh, focus on uh, technology skills, right, on digital literacy. And, um, yeah, and that is actually why we uh, started with the idea of founding Junge Tüftler because uh, I am a designer in my back, uh, from my background and Julia, my friend and business partner, she is a media technologist and um, so um, why don't we, we thought why don't we bring this together and we started with first workshops and things like that in order to, um, to get more experienced in that and um, in this area and what we see is lots of people and especially schools are super interested in that but they don't know how to approach this area. And um, yeah, this is now finally what, <laughs> what we are doing actually. So Junge Tüftler offers ongoing classes, camps, um, workshops, uh, we call it makeathons, not hackathons because we make a lot of stuff. Um, uh, with kids from uh, first grade to 10th grade and um, it is always about of course technology and we tinker with them we have um, lots of uh, microcontrollers but we also have like breadboards laying around and sensors and LEDs and all that stuff and we help the kids actually to realize their own um, their own ideas of what they want to build so most of the time we have a topic like sustainability and uh, following the um, design process, um, uh, we help them de to develop, to understand the tools and really to open up everything. So I think it's really bad to um, keep the technology in a bl black box, but it's super important to open it up and look inside and see what's in, in there and how does it work and to understand that it's actually made by people and not by only companies and that you can be one of these persons who can do this. Um, yeah, and um, so here you can see, for example, different different things. So we work with um, electronic music, we work with uh, artificial intelligence projects. Of course, we work a lot with uh, robots, and uh, this is an Arduino, and these guys are coding uh, uh, a, a game. So it's, uh, we have all these different approaches to the digital topic or to um, yeah, code-related top topics and to electricity-related topics and try to get kids excited uh, from a very different angle or point of view about it. And um, as I already mentioned, we use the design process and um, processes from the agile working method to, um, to help the kids uh, create an own idea, to understand what, they, what the possibilities are to create an own idea, and then also to realize their idea in software, in hardware, or in both. 
and they work in teams um, and then we have for example a code team a design team and a content team and they rotate and they have to come together again like scrum uh, stand-up meetings and have to of course we don't call it like that but um, yeah but uh, they have to come together and talk about it or they have here you can see this was uh, during a camp um, with a 3d printing um, uh, station we had this kind of task that you have to do what is uh, right now in process and what is done and so the kids also get a an idea of uh, they are the master of their project and they organize themselves around the project and this is already quite common to you guys probably because everybody who works here at least uh, might know that um, but it's super um, uh, new to kids who go to school and also to teachers because they are the teachers um, present the topic they are working on right now and the kids are always in this consuming um, uh, perspective and this gets really um, the kids into an active role into a self um, uh, um, determined role where they can decide what they want to work on and then you can understand way more why am I doing that and what am I doing that for and so the kids are way better motivated to realize their project and of course it's easier to learn when you're really driven by a goal and you want to realize this cool robot who is always I don't know what doing uh, getting me a drink uh, whenever I'm thirsty then to learn how to code because I'm writing the lines from the board so um, this is kind of our one of our core values that the kids learn intrinsic motivated and um, yeah um, what I really want to emphasize is that it is not totally not about getting all kids excited about being a coding person one day but um, we want to understand uh, we want to make the kids understand really basic algorithmic um, uh, um, uh, yeah processes and what's behind that and to understand computational thinking computational thinking yeah. thank you <laughs> exactly um, and I think that is really important to understand algorithms because um, if you want to be a part of future society you cannot be only a very savvy uh, uh, smartphone user and a very savvy app user or a learning app user but you have to understand the concepts behind um, to actually be uh, have a voice in the digital society and to um, be part of it and to be a, a designer of the future world where you want to actually live in right um, this is r something really crucial to make the kids understand that they that it's in their hand to shape the future they want they they dream of and it's not uh, this app or that app they can use but if you like that app great but if you don't like it make your own one and make it better because uh, for the first time we have all the all the tools at hand right we can print 3d objects which look like things you buy in the store and they are made by me at home and you can create an app which you can put on the app store and you can you can sell it and people can buy it and it's so easy now to um, to, to create things by yourself and I think that is really crucial for kids to understand this um, impact they can have with um, digital tools however as I said not everybody needs to be a coding person in the end there are very um, there are various areas you can you can be creative with I think the the most important thing is that you understand technology as a way to um, to express your creativity and your thoughts and that it is um, yeah the as I said, you can be a designer, you can be a coding person, but you can also be a content person, whatever. Um, in the end, it all needs to come together. And actually, I'm almost <laughs> done now. Um, the last thing um, I wanted to share with you is that uh, what drives me most about uh, my job actually is uh, the, the, how excited uh, kids can get when they realize that um, they just made their first app which pops a ball around and uh, this might be super easy but it's a start and um, uh, it's also uh, always um, expectation management right the kids come to our place and they say that I want to make an app which can uh, which can control a rocket which goes to Mars and then we are like yeah cool idea let's try to make an app first and then they have this ball app and they are super excited and they leave with uh, something they built by themselves and they are super proud and they can share 
So, um, however, they have this dream, and maybe in two years they are a little bit closer. Maybe they have the rocket already. I don't know. <laughs> however, uh, <laughs> yeah. And um, what I just wanted to say as my last uh, uh, thing is that it is um, super fascinating to me how crazily uh, motivated kids get when they. Um, when, when they understand what they can do actually with it, that they are not only consumers, but they are creators. And um, I think everybody can share their knowledge in uh, meetups or whatever, and that's why it's super important to um, uh, get into education, I think, because we all want a positive future where we are the master of the technology and not uh, vice versa. And yeah. That's already it. Thank you. If you want more info, come talk to me or visit our website. Uh, I will be around. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.